Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As we said last week, the season of Epiphany is a season of revealing, of God making manifest things to us about who His Son is and why His Son has come for us. In order for God to reveal His gospel, His Son, His salvation to us, in order for this to happen, heaven must be opened. We saw this last week in Jesus' baptism. As Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were opened up, ripped open, and God the Father spoke from heaven saying, This is my Son with whom I am well pleased. We also see heaven opened when the temple curtain is torn in two and access to God is granted. God opens up the heavens so that we may see Him and have access to Him. Here, in our Gospel reading today, Jesus says to Nathanael, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus says to Nathaniel, you will see, you will see greater things than these. You will see heaven open. You will see with your own eyes. Nathaniel himself will see these things. And throughout John's Gospel, this is only chapter 1 of John's Gospel, but throughout John's Gospel, seeing is a major theme of Jesus' life and ministry. At the very center of John's Gospel, in John chapter 9, we have the account of the blind man receiving his sight, the man who was blind from birth, who has never seen the light of day. Now his sight is given to him, and he can see for the first time. And there's a bit of a, a trial going on, where the blind man, the formerly blind man, gives his testimony. The Pharisees send their accusations and they ask their questions. They interrogate him and he bears witness to who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. And then finally, after this trial is over, the blind man goes back to Jesus and Jesus reveals himself to him and he says this, for judgment I came into the world that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. And then, of course, at the very end of John's Gospel, we have the account of Thomas. Thomas, who said, unless I see the holes in his hands, and unless I touch the marks in his side, I will not believe. And Jesus says to Thomas, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Yes, throughout John's Gospel, so much seeing. And here in John chapter 1, so much finding. Jesus goes and he finds Philip. And then Philip finds Nathanael. And what does Philip say to Nathanael? We have found Jesus, we have found the Messiah, the one of whom Moses and the prophets wrote. We have found him. And of course, we look back at it and we see that Philip didn't find Jesus at all. Jesus found Philip, but we get the point. And Nathaniel answers, from Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? I've never seen anything good come from Nazareth before, Nathaniel says. And this is, of course, a prejudice. This is prejudging the people from, Nathan from, from Nazareth. 
Judging before evidence. Judging without seeing. Nathaniel is essentially saying, I'll decide if he's the Messiah or not. According to my rubrics, according to my standards, according to my own experience. And yet, Philip lovingly invites Nathaniel, calls him to put aside his prejudice, to put aside his standards and his experience, and simply to come and see Jesus. To come and see him for himself. And of course, to see him is also to hear him. Hear his words. Hear what he has to say. And then, you may believe as well. It makes me wonder sometimes, what do our neighbors who don't attend this church, what do they think happens here in this sanctuary on Sunday mornings? What do they assume, what do they prejudge is going on within these doors, within these walls, when they see all these cars parked in the parking lot? What do they assume is going on here? What do they prejudge? Can anything good come out of that church in Jonesville, Indiana? Can anything good happen there? What do they assume? Do they assume that we are just getting together and judging the world, talking about how good we are and how bad they are, and they want no part of it? Obviously, we who have come and saw, we who are part of this church know that that's not what church is all about. But what is it that's keeping them away? What is it that they think, this is not for me? Certainly, we know the reason for coming to church is to hear the Word of God, to be once again assured that our sins are forgiven and that our way of salvation is prepared for us by the Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the One who was sent to us, the One who died for us, and indeed, the One who rose for us. And to hear that message week after week, to receive that assurance and that confidence that we are heirs of the kingdom of heaven. That is why we are here. And that, quite frankly, is what they are missing. That's what they need to come and see for themselves. And so that is our invitation to our neighbors, to the unbelievers, to those who don't know what's going on here. We don't need to convince them. We don't need to argue with them. We don't need to persuade them. We simply need to invite them. Come and see. See for yourself. See what the gospel of Jesus Christ is really all about. Don't take my word for it. Because quite frankly, sometimes we don't have the words. Sometimes we can't explain every point of Lutheran doctrine as clearly as we would like. Sometimes we can't even describe why we come to church. And so we simply invite, come and see. See for yourself. And then we pray and hope that by his Holy Spirit, Jesus, who calls, gathers, and enlightens his whole Christian church on earth, will also call them into this church, will also gather them into this assembly, and will also enlighten them with His Word and His sacrament. Jesus says to Nathaniel, you will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus here then is, is the ladder or the bridge between heaven and earth. He is the one that connects God to us and vice versa, connecting us to the Almighty God. He is the one on whom his messengers descend. You see, the word angels means messengers. And so it says the angels are descending from God to us. They are his messengers, the one bringing the good news 
the gospel of salvation to each and every one of us. For Samuel, the person who brought the Lord to Samuel was Eli. Eli, who was familiar with God's word, pointed Samuel to hear that word for himself. For Nathanael, it was Philip. Philip, who went to him and said, We have found the Messiah. Come and see. So I ask you, who was it for you? Who brought you to the Christian faith? Who brought you to this church in, in particular? Was it parents? Was it teachers? Perhaps pastors? Perhaps a neighbor who simply said to you, come and see what this is all about. And whoever that messenger was, whoever that angel was that came to you and brought you to the church, Jesus is the one who was revealed. You see, it's not about the messenger. It is not about the person bringing the good news, but it is about the object of our faith, Jesus Christ himself. It is on him that these messengers came, and it is him that we continue to see, even when the original messengers are taken out of the picture. The only way, the only way that we have the revelation of Jesus Christ is through Christ himself. And this is what we invite others to come and see as well. To hear his word, to receive his gifts, as the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens even us. Yes, the Lord works through means. He always works through voices. Voices such as the one Samuel heard. Voices telling him to go, listen to the Lord. Listen to his word. The Lord works through sight. Seeing like Nathaniel. Come and see. See what the Lord has in store for you. Today the Lord works also through tasting. Taste and see that the Lord is good as we receive his gifts and the sacrament. Don't focus on who is speaking the word of God. Don't focus on who is showing you who Jesus is. Don't focus on who is serving you the Lord's body and blood. But focus instead on him who is being served, who is being spoken about, who is being revealed to us. Jesus is the one on whom the angels ascend and descend. Jesus descended from heaven to earth in the incarnation when he became human flesh. He is the one that came from heaven to earth to build that bridge and be that ladder between God and man. And we see him. We see him on the cross, not judging our sin, but forgiving it. We see him accomplishing our salvation. We see him defeating all our enemies, sin, death, and the devil. And so we see him opening heaven to all believers by his death and resurrection. Yes, the heavens are opened. God has spoken to us, and we have access to God through Jesus Christ. It is on him that God comes to us, and it is by him that we come to God. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us see him, see who he is and what he has done, because he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.